Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm one of the Ballarat teachers, and I want to welcome you to our fifth grade overnight preparation video. In this video, you will find all the information you need to be prepared for your Ballarat overnight trip. To help you understand everything, we have split this video into multiple chapters. You can access those chapters using the playback bar, or you can navigate to them using the timestamps in the description below this video. So what is Ballarat? Ballarat is a Denver public school that has been with the district for over 50 years. And we've been doing fifth grade overnight programming for over 40 years. We are a science school with a focus on providing students with learning opportunities in Colorado's outdoor environments. And our goal is to foster the growth of the whole child and strengthen their connections to their classrooms through experiences in the natural world. Our site is located about 50 miles northwest of Denver in Boulder County near Jamestown, Colorado. Depending on where your school is, it'll take about an hour and a half to travel from Denver up to our site. So how do we keep students safe at Ballarat? Well, first off, all Ballarat staff are DPS employees, which means we've gone through the same background checks and vetting process as any other DPS staff member that works with students. Secondly, Ballarat staff are all certified in wilderness medicine. Many of us are certified in wilderness first responder training, which is one level below wilderness EMT. We all carry backcountry first aid kits, and the site has two emergency EpiPens, as well as two AEDs, should an emergency arise in which we need to use them. We each also carry a two-way radio whenever we're working on site. These radios can not only communicate to other staff members on site, but also can communicate to our Denver office, should an emergency arise. Also, if you ever have a family emergency, you can contact our Bellrat office and they can get a hold of us through these radios. Finally, we have multiple landline phones in all of our main lodges that can communicate to Denver if needed. Prior to your child having the chance to go to Ballarat and arrive at Ballarat, there are some forms to consider. About two to four weeks prior to your child's Ballarat trip, you should receive these forms from the classroom teacher. One is a list of what to bring and what not to bring. This is a supplies list and you can use it to prepare your child for the Ballarat excursion. You do not need to return this form with your child's packet. There is a registration form that is required to be turned in. This uh, form must be completed and turned into your child's teacher as soon as possible before the excursion. The form is two-sided and must be signed by a parent or guardian. It contains important information for the Ballarat teachers to use to contact you in the case of an emergency or illness. On the first page, the very top of the form, there's information. There's a, an area for information about your child, their name, student ID number, and birth date. Also, your address and home phone, and, and work phone and cell phone, parent information. At the bottom of the form, the cost per student for the Ballarat trip is listed. This cost is payable to your child's school. There's also an area for parents and guardians to sign the form. On the back side of the form, there is an area for dietary restrictions and how they're handled at Ballarat. There's an area about any allergies your child might have, any medications that they might receive and how to go about uh, applying those, those medications. If your child has any physical challenges or disabilities, there's a statement about the accessibility uh, while at Ballarat. For any child that receives medication on a daily basis and will need medication at Ballarat, there is a student medication request form. Only medications that are ordered by a doctor are permitted. There are no over-the-counter medications that are permitted. That includes cough drops, vitamins, herbal supplements, aspirin or Tylenol or medications such as these only prescription medications are permitted. This request form must accompany each medication. And one 
of these forms for each medication. For example, if your child receives two medications daily, each different medication should have one of these medication forms. This form must be completed by a doctor and then turned into the school nurse. Please see your school nurse for questions. If your child suffers severe allergies that require medication, this additional allergy and anaphylaxis emergency care plan form must be completed and turned into the school nurse. Students who have an EpiPen prescription should plan on having their EpiPen with their child's with their classroom teacher on the excursion. In addition, for children that suffer from asthma, this additional asthma care plan form must be completed if your child has asthma and uses an inhaler or other medication to control asthma. Ask the school nurse about self-carry orders if applicable. Please make sure to turn in completed medical forms to the school nurse as early as possible. And please know that not all school nurses are in the building every day. Teachers will carry and administer medications to children while on the Ballarat trip. And any forms and medications uh, turned in the day of the trip may not be accepted. students, we heard you have a Ballarat trip, and we're here to help you be prepared for that trip. My name is Becky. I'm a Ballarat teacher. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm also a Ballarat teacher. And we're going to start with your footwear, what you should wear on, the, on your feet for that field trip. Um, comfortable, sturdy gym shoes or tennis shoes with laces that tie. And me and Mr. Eric are wearing our tennis shoes today on the trail. You want to have some tread, some traction on the bottom of your shoe. And those tennis shoes should have laces that are tied nice and tight. Um, another great option would be any sort of hiking boots or hiking shoes. Any sort of snow boots um, or waterproof boots would be a great option for Ballarat as well. Uh, we want to make sure we stay away from, you know, no sandals, no Crocs, no flip-flops, no fashion boots, no fashion shoes, nothing with a heel or a wedge. Um, some good outdoor shoes that you also aren't afraid to get a little bit dirty. And... To keep your feet warm, besides the shoes, we got to think about our socks. And at Ballarat, we have a rule, no ankle socks. Your socks have to go all the way up past your ankles. That's going to keep your ankles warm and, and dry. And um, if we're going to have really cold temperatures the day of your Ballarat trip, you should wear two pairs of socks that day. Down on this part of your body, we want to wear long pants. We don't want shorts or skirts uh, because we want to protect our legs even on a warm day because bushes and, and uh, seeds and things can get caught into our legs. We can scratch our legs. Jeans are a great example of a material because they're, they're pretty durable. We just don't want to have holes in our jeans because then cool air would come in. Another thing we don't want to have is leggings or tights because they just are too tight against our skin. Nice baggy jeans are better because they keep our legs warmer. Um, if it's a, going to be a very cold day, even uh, long underwear or even pajama bottoms under our jeans would be great. Um, other kinds of uh, pants could be corduroy pants, uh, athletic pants, khakis. Those are all great options. Next up, we're going to talk about what you need to wear from the waist up, your upper body. And we want you to think of this as four layers. And that sounds like a lot, but at Ballarat, you're going to need those four layers. Um, layer number one, layer number one, long sleeves. It can be a long sleeve t-shirt or turtleneck or a, a long sleeve thermal. Layer number two can be a short sleeve t-shirt. And you want to wear those layers together at the same time. Nice, loose, comfy t-shirt. But man, I'm, I'm cold in just these two layers. Eric, what else should I have on? So layer number three can be your sweatshirt, a hoodie, or a sweater. And layer number four can be your winter coat that's puffy and also waterproof. If you can swish it like this and mix that kind of sound, you know that it's going to be waterproof and comfortable. If it does happen to 
be a little bit warmer that day, you can take off a layer and tie it around your waist or put it in your backpack. On the Ballarat day trip, you'll want to have some extra things along for the journey. And you can carry those extra things in a day pack. Any kind of backpack with two straps that are um, padded, that's the best type. Um, even your school backpack will work. And in this backpack, you'll want to have some things like a water bottle. It's important to stay hydrated in the mountains. So having any kind of leak-proof bottle that's about one quart or one liter, uh, about 32 ounces is great. I just used this one from, uh, this used to be a pop, a soda pop bottle, um, and I just washed it out and used it. Uh, by the way, the only thing that we um, permit on the trips is water. So you don't want to bring any juice or Gatorade or soda because those things are messy. Also, you don't need to freeze this bottle beforehand, otherwise it can stay frozen through the whole day. Uh, you'll want to have extra clothing, like a hat to protect you. Gloves are a great idea. You'll want to have sunblock and sun protection. Uh, so a, a baseball cap or a visor or a sun hat is great. If all you have is a sweater uh, or hoodie and it's cloth, it could be uh, uh, it could get pretty wet in the situation of rain or snow. So having a poncho to put over or a rain jacket is a great idea. For those of us that don't have something like that, just a big plastic trash bag can work. And tear a little hole in the top for our heads and put it over. And we have an instant poncho, just like that. Now for the last few things to bring. Uh, you'll need to have a lunch, and I put my lunch in a cloth bag, but you could use a paper bag or a plastic sack as well. Uh, for the lunch, we want to have healthy food that'll actually fill you up. Uh, we're gonna be eating with our hands out on a trail, so we don't wanna have anything that you need a fork or a spoon for. Um, and after lunch, it'll be necessary for us to take our trash with us. So if you'd like to add, a little plastic grocery sack, then your trash can go in there and it won't make your backpack all yucky. Um, you'll be able to bring a journal and pencil as well. Your teacher is gonna be able to um, be taking photos. So uh, you'll have plenty of photos of, of you and your friends at Ballarat. But if you'd like, one option is to bring a disposable camera. Uh, this kind of disposable film camera is easy to use and it's not electronic because we don't uh, allow electronic things. We don't want cell phones or screens at Ballarat, but this can be a fun way to record memories on your journey. So now you know what to wear and what to bring for the Ballarat day trip. We'll see you on the trail.